What is going on today, everyone? Welcome back to Fix It Garage. Today, we're gonna be doing some basic maintenance on an Honda HRV. Now, we've got a first gen HRV here that just needs some basic maintenance. We need to do a spark plug valve adjust, a water pump, and a drive belt with a drive belt tensioner. The drive belt on this car is cracking, so we're going to recommend the belt and tensioner. The car has over 100,000 miles, so we're gonna go ahead and put a new water pump in it, along with adjusting the valves and replacing the spark plugs. And I'm gonna bring you guys along for the project. I'm gonna show you as much as I can about doing the drive belt, tensioner, water pump, and the spark plug valve adjust. But that is enough talking. Let's get started work on this car right away. Before we get started on today's video, I wanna remind you guys that I do stream on YouTube and Twitch. YouTube is primarily racing games and soon to be some just chatting sections and Twitch is all of my other gameplay. I like to play video games when I'm not wrenching on cars, so I figured, why not stream it? So it's on both of them. I have my Twitch channel linked down below. Be sure to come check it out when I go live. I'll also try to post more on Instagram when I'm going live. With that being said, let's start on this car right away. All right, so we've got our valve cover off and our spark plugs out. You can see pulling the valve cover off is very simple. You've just got the valve cover bolts, the coil packs, and then we just needed to pull out our spark plugs. And we have all of that off, so now we can let our valve train cool off a little bit. It's still a little warm. You don't want to, you don't want to be adjusting the valves when it is, uh, when you do a valve adjust, the valve train needs to cool down below 100 degrees per Honda. Right now it's just a hair warmer. We've actually already let the car sit for a little bit, but we need to let that valve train cool down. So while it's cooling down, we can start on our drive belt tensioner, water pump, all of that. And the first thing we have to do is jack up the passenger side corner of the car so we can pull the wheel and then we'll have to use the jack to support the engine because we're gonna be removing the motor mount to get access to that timing cover side of the engine in order to remove the drive belt and the drive belt tensioner. So we're gonna go ahead and put on a jack stand and pull the wheel. You guys don't need to see me do that. You know how to do that. And then I'm gonna start pulling out this motor mount with the floor jack to support the engine and start working on this side of the motor. So as you just saw, the first thing I did was I removed that motor mount, removed, then removed the drive belt and the alternator. The alternator is held in with two bolts. You've got a 12 mil on top and a 12 millimeter on the bottom. One of them goes here and one of them is down here. I removed those and I can move the alternator out of the way. I also unplugged the AC compressor and its harness. That way I don't damage it. Now with that out of the way, we can more easily see our water pump down here. And in order to remove the water pump, we have to remove this drive belt tensioner. And in order to remove the drive belt tensioner, we have to remove the water pump pulley. Well, the water pump pulley spins and it is held on. Whoops, let me drop. The water pump pulley freely spins and it's held on by three 10 millimeter bolts. There's a special tool that Honda makes to hold it in place. You can also use an Allen key. The other trick is you can lower the engine down because of the fact that it's on a jack stand. We can lower it down into this void here and we usually can get an impact gun with a wobbly 10 mil socket on it and we can just remove the pulley from down here. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it on a tripod so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. So the next thing we're gonna do is remove that water pump pulley and then we're going to work on removing the drive belt tensioner. We 
we've got our drive belt tensioner off, but before that, let's look at the drive belt real quick. So here we have our drive belt, and here we can see the cracks that are in it. Those are some pretty substantial cracks. That is just from high mileage and rubber breakdown. So that is why we are replacing the belt. So if you look at the tensioner, it doesn't look like it has any issues, but when you get to be this high of mileage, I like to go ahead and throw in a drive belt tensioner at the same time. The last thing you wanna do is replace a drive belt, put tensioner on, and then it starts to squeak because this starts to fail or it gets slack and it breaks off. So I like to go ahead and throw in a new drive belt tensioner. Now to remove it, there's two bolts. You have an Allen and you have a 12 mil. The Allen, you have to remove that water pump pulley to get to, and this also blocks the water pump. So in order to do the water pump, you have to take this off. In order to take this off, you have to take off the water pump pulley. Also, I was wrong. On the water pump pulley on the HRV, it is not 10 mil bolts. The pulley is 12 millimeter bolts. I forgot that they changed them on the HRV compared to the Civic. So I ended those three 12s and then I undid the water pump, or sorry, I ended the three 12s to the water pump pulley. And then I undid the two bolts of the tensioner and I swung the tensioner out the top as you saw. <sighs> the directions tell you to pull the crank pulley off, but what you can do is you can kind of snake it around the water pump gear that's left behind when you remove the pulley and you can snake it out. That way you don't have to take off the crank pulley because I really didn't feel like pulling it off. Now with that out of the way, we can move on to our water pump. So down here is our water pump. Now when I do water pumps, I have a little trick that I like to do. I like to break loose the top three bolts a little bit, move them out maybe one or two turns, and then take the bottom one bolts and I'll bring them out about four or five turns just just enough so I can pop the water pump off the mating surface, but not so much that the water pump will come flying off. What this will do is it will let me control the coolant draining of the water pump. Because when you pop it, coolant's gonna come out. So what I wanna do is I want to make it the least amount of mess as possible. And by just barely popping it, it lets it flow out, but it doesn't come gushing out at full speed, making a massive mess. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and pop off that water pump get it loose and let it drain, and then we will remove and replace the water pump. So the water pump is now changed. And here is our old water pump. And you can see here, it is held on with five bolts to the engine block. We loosened these three bolts about two turns and these ones about four. And then I just grabbed right here and I pulled. If you can't pull and break it free, you can take a pry bar and pry against this and pop it. And then the coolant will just drain out of the bottom of it. And when you only and when you do it that way, it doesn't make as big of a mess. So I just popped it and just came out here nice and gently. Didn't make a huge mess when I did the coolant. Looking down here, we can see there's not a massive coolant mess all over the engine. There's a little bit that we'll have to clean up, which I'll probably just get a garden hose and put some water on here and that will clean it up really quickly. But you can see our nice shiny new water pump is installed. Now with that new water pump in, you already know what time it is. It's time to put this side of the engine back together, starting with the new drive belt tensioner. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna throw in our brand new drive belt tensioner.
So that was a bunch of work that just got done right there. Let me walk you guys through what we did. So once we got the new water pump on, we went to town. We got our new drive belt tensioner installed with the steel right there. You kind of saw me work it underneath the water pump. Can we work on that 8 millimeter Allen and the 12 mil bolt that's over here? And we threw our alternator back on. And lastly, we threw on our water pump fully. And then we threw the drive belt on. As I said in previous videos, if you're doing a drive belt, draw it out on a piece of paper before you take it off. And that way, then it's a lot easier when you put it back on. I did not do that because I've had these drive belts off enough, but I know exactly the way they go. But if you don't, draw it out. It'll make it so much easier. Trust me, it is like the best thing you can do when we're going to take a picture. We live in a modern era with cell phones and cameras. Take a picture, that way you guys know how to be there. This is right up close and put it back on. Oh. So now that we have all of it reassembled, it's time to put on our motor mount. And after we get on our motor mount, this side will be fully reassembled, other than we need to plug in the compressor, but we'll do that as well. Then it's time to move on to the valve adjustment, which I'm gonna walk you guys through how to adjust one set of valves, and I'm gonna do the rest of them. And that's gonna be this car pretty much all done. So let's go ahead, throw our motor mount back on, and then we'll catch back up with you guys on when we start doing our valve adjustment. So we have everything all reassembled. So all that is left now is our valve adjust and our spark plug replacement. Now we're gonna start off with the valve adjust. With the spark plugs out, the engine will rotate more freely. Now the first thing you know about doing a valve adjust on a Honda, when the engine is on the passenger side and the transmission is on the driver's side, you will always rotate the engine counterclockwise. I have my tool set up here with a 19 millimeter socket attached to the crank pulley and my massive ratchet to rotate the engine counterclockwise. If you go clockwise, you will potentially cause it to jump time because you will put tension the wrong way on the tensioner, which can cause it to back off. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get this thing to cylinder one top dead center. So we need to get this engine to cylinder one top dead center. And unfortunately right now, see that thing that says up? That is our cylinder one top dead center mark and we are past it. So we need to roll this engine around past everything, because I like to start at cylinder one. That's four. Okay, so we have our engine at cylinder one, top dead center. And you can see a line here and a line over here. Those are level with this timing cover. And this upward is straight up and down. That indicates that cylinder one is at top dead center. So now we are ready to adjust the valves. Now I have pre-looked up the clearances for our valve adjustment. And the intake valves are 0 0.20 millimeters is our mid spec and the exhaust valve is 0.25 for the middle spec. I like to shoot for that middle spec because then it gives me some leeway both on the loose and the tight end of the adjustment. So in case I don't get it exactly perfect, it should still be within that range. Now, how do I adjust the valves? Well, I'm gonna show you guys right now how I adjust the valves as best as possible. 
Adjusting valves is a two-handed job, so trying to hold a camera at the same time is not ideal, but we're gonna do our best. First off, the tools I use. I have a few of them. So I have some feeler gauges here that are the correct size already. They say the correct size on them, and I don't know how well it'll show up on camera, but the sizes are on them, and I have verified them with a micrometer in the past, and they are still good. And I've got two separate valve adjustment tools. I've got one here that's a snap-on blue point one that I bought, that when you use it, it sits on top of the valve. That when you use it, there's the valve adjustment nut that you can break loose, and then there is a screwdriver inside of there, a flathead that you can use to turn the adjuster screw on top of the valve. I also have the Honda Special Tool one. This is a Honda Special Tool, it's two pieces, but if you look, it's got the tool there to break the jam nut loose and the flathead to adjust it. This is great if you don't have a lot of room to adjust the valves on a Honda, like some of the V6s, you just can't fit that in there. But for this engine, we don't actually need this. We're gonna use this one just because it, it's bigger and it's a lot easier to use. So we're gonna use that and our feeler gauges and we're gonna start off on cylinder one. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm only going to show you guys on the exhaust side because it is the side that I can get the most light to and it is the easiest to see on camera. Normally I would do all of it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys on our two exhaust valves, and then I'm gonna adjust the rest of them after I show you. So the exhaust spec for this engine is 0.25. We're gonna take our valve adjustment tool, we're gonna to slide it on top of the valve, and it, between, and it goes in between the valve and the rocker arm. There's a gap there, and what I'm doing is I'm sliding it back and forth in between and feeling it to see how tight it is. Like right now, this, is really, really loose. Like I can throw this around, it is very loose. We're gonna check our other one. Same thing, very loose. And I'm, I'm, and what I'm doing is I'm pulling it and feeling the drag and I'm also kind of listening, but mainly it's all by feel. You can feel how much drag there is between the rocker and the top of the valve in there. And right now there is almost no drag, meaning that these valves are loose and they need to be tightened. Too loose of valves means they won't open enough and you will not get enough air and fuel in there, meaning you can be losing fuel economy. We want them in spec because that will help promote the best fuel economy and the best power for this little tiny 1.8 liter engine. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna adjust it. So I found that this one is loose. So I'm gonna take my feeler gauge or my I'm gonna take my valve adjustment tool, set it on top to where I can see in there, put my flathead on, break the jam nut loose, and I hold it, and while I'm feeling it, I'm making tiny, and I mean tiny adjustments to, the, to that, I'm making tiny adjustments with the screwdriver part of the tool. So now, it's kinda of hard to tell, but right now this has gotten a lot tighter, almost too tight. So I back it off just the tiniest amount and now it feels a lot better. And then what I do, I tighten the jam nut back up without over tightening it. If you pull this too tight, what you can do is you can actually start to pull the adjuster up through this aluminum and you'll damage the rocker arm. And then you have to replace the rocker arm. We don't wanna do that. But now I can sit here and you see how it doesn't swing as far as loose. That has just the right amount of resistance on it. And that feels really good. Whereas if I stick this over here, it's like just super loose. So now we're gonna do this valve. Same concept, put the tool on, put the flathead in, break it loose. I'm hanging on to my adjuster, sliding it back and forth and just making some small adjustments. And now I have it to where it feels good. Tighten up our jam nut and voila, it is no longer loose it is now got nice and snug so with both of these done i'm going to put you guys up on a different camera and i'm going to adjust the rest of the valves before i do there's a couple tricks that you can use on four cylinders as long as you know the firing order so on this engine obviously you have some cylinders with all the valves closed like cylinder one because it's top dead center combustion but then you also have other cylinders with valves that are closed that you can adjust. On this engine, you can adjust cylinder two intake and cylinder three exhaust when you're on cylinder one TDC. 
I know that from many years of experience and from other technicians, and I've learned this throughout the years. So if you're unsure of it, the best option is to always go one cylinder at a time. So why not? If you finish cylinder one, you rotate the camshaft a quarter turn, the crank a half a turn, and you'll go to cylinder three. And then you'll repeat the process and you'll go to cylinder four, and then you'll go to cylinder two. Now, before I finish adjusting the valves, I'll actually show you. On the 1.8 liter, it actually tells you the cylinder you're on all of the time. So before I rotate it, I'm gonna take my adjuster tool out. We will move back over here and we will rotate it and you'll see if I go the camshaft, if I don't drop the tool off again, which I just did, we'll go a quarter turn. Now you'll see, I don't know how well you can see the number, but that's a three and there's another line right here and that's saying that that's cylinder three top dead center. And we'll rotate it again. And we'll get to that point. And look, once again, line there, cylinder four. Ignore this colored link. That is only for when you're replacing timing chains. That is irrelevant during a valve adjust. And then we will go again. And look at that. You can see the mark already coming up. We get to there. We can see that now we're at cylinder two. And then we'll go back around again. Ooh. And we are back to cylinder one, top dead center. So that is how you do a valve adjust. Now, I'm gonna set you guys up. I'm gonna put on my favorite copyrighted music and I'm gonna knock this thing out real quick. So we got it all put back together, but we're not done just yet. So we changed out the water pump and now there's no coolant in the car. Well, we need to bleed the cooling system. So what does that mean? Well, first it means we need to fill coolant into the vehicle and then we need to run the engine until the fan cycle. When the fan cycle, it means that the thermostat is open and that the system is flowing all the way around through the radiator. That means that the system is bled. We need to get all the air bubbles out because air is not as efficient at cooling down the engine as coolant. So what do I use for bleeding the cooling system? I use a spill-free coolant funnel. This guy right here, it has an attachment that hooks up right to the radiator. There's actually several attachments for it. If we look over here, all those different attachments, those are for different vehicles. So I use this and I'll cover the top with a rag and pour coolant in and it will allow the air to bubble out and coolant to go in. Once it stops bubbling and it kind of settles, then we can start the engine and run it until the fans kick on. Usually I'll let the fan cycle. I'll shut the key off, let it bubble down. Once it settles, I can use this stopper and I can plug it and I can remove this, top off the overflow and put the pressure cap back on all without making a mess. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna fill this up and then we're gonna bleed the cooling system.
because there's shit on the belt. That's fine. We'll clean it off. We'll take care of that. Yeah. Alrighty, so we got the cooling system bled, the engine runs great, and now we don't have to worry about that drive belt snapping anymore. Overall, this is not a very hard service to do yourself in your garage on your own time. You don't need a lot of tools. The biggest thing is making sure that you have the correct specs for the valve clearance and having quality valve adjustment tools. You want them to be accurate. If you buy some ones that are a little bit cheaper, they might not be as accurate as your expensive valve clearance tools. This method only works if you have this style of engine with, that has the valve adjustment screw on top. There are other types of engines that you have to adjust the valves differently on, but that is for another video and another day. This vehicle is done and ready to go back to my buddy. He can take it home and he can enjoy it and no longer have to worry about anything going wrong. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on your drive belt because the last thing you want is for that thing to crack and split and break. That is gonna leave you stranded on the side of the road and we do not want that. You don't wanna be stranded anywhere having to wait for a tow truck or a friend or anything. You wanna have your car on the road safe all the time. So make sure that you keep up on your maintenance. Check your, check your belts, check your fluids. Always make sure that you're staying on top of everything to keep your cars maintained and running in tip top condition. I will always say, yes, it is expensive to do your maintenance, but it is a whole lot more expensive if something breaks. Your bill will increase exponentially if you fail to do your maintenance and then it leads to part failure, like an engine or a water pump failure, which could take out an engine. It's a lot cheaper to put a water pump in than to replace a motor, all because you didn't want to spend the upfront money for the water pump. But that is gonna do it for today, everybody. I wanna thank all of you guys for watching. As always, if you guys like what you saw, don't forget to smash the like button, leave some comments down below, and subscribe for more videos. Be sure to go check out my Twitch channel and catch some YouTube live streams. I look forward to seeing you guys there, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.